Hi, Kevin Henry, the Group Editorial Director for UBM Medica's Dental Division and Modern Dental Business, and I'm on a Google Hangout today with my friend and the front desk lady, Lisa Marie Spradley. Good morning, my friend. How are you? Good morning, Kevin. I'm doing great. How are you? Happy Friday. Uh, happy Friday, indeed. You know, what a way to ease into the weekend talking to you. It's a very good thing. So thanks for taking a few minutes. Uh, I know our audience loves uh, hearing your thoughts, and always I love the excuse to chat with you. So it's a great day. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm excited. It's August. You know, it's almost time for ADOM. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Very excited. And I will look forward to seeing you in Boca Raton. We're going to have a good time. And uh, I know a lot of folks are looking forward to that. But, you know, some of those, those same folks might be doing some hiring between now and then. Uh, you know, and, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that are going on with the corporate dentistry landscape a little bit. And what you're hearing, okay. maybe, because... There, there's been some talk lately about the importance of a degree whenever you bring somebody into work at the front desk or as an office manager, you know, and, and I'm just curious, what are you hearing about that in terms of the importance of a degree as well as how group practices and corporate dentistry are maybe influencing that? Well, you know, it's kind of uh, funny because I, um, I have have seen where more corporate practices, you know, they're they're looking to hire uh, business managers. So they are going for someone with a business degree or more of a business background so that they can uh, better market and, you know, just look at all those key indicators that you have when you're dealing with a corporate dental clinic. Um, I, that I, what I find is that, you know, while that business degree is definitely a plus, there's um, nothing that uh, beats just that uh, personal experience. You know, I don't know that you know this, Kevin. I, I, well, I think that you might, but I'm actually getting ready to uh, step down as practice administrator in my practice that I'm at. And when looking for someone to fill the role for us, for a single provider, um, the degree didn't come into it at all. What was important was around the dental background and the people skills. I needed someone that was able to get the job done and do it in a way that they still were taking care of the patients first and foremost. So while I see that, you know, especially in the larger group practices, that those business degrees, you know, they seem to be more common when they're hiring. They're not a must. And it's important for uh, everybody to understand that, you know, just because you don't have a degree, don't think that it disqualifies you because a lot of times what you've learned on the job is far more important than what someone else has picked up in a book and hasn't actually applied, you know? So it's, it's very interesting to me, uh, especially, you know, some of the things that I've uh, have, um, you know, I've seen and that I've heard, it's, it's demeaning in some ways the way um, that people maybe perceive. The, you know, you and I have talked before how I think it's very important that front office team members have a continuing education platform too. So they're, they're like the most important part of the practice when it comes to bringing in patients and scheduling those patients. And when the doctor hires someone and places that value, that trust, and putting them in that position, then they need to make sure that, number one, they're continuing that person's education so that they can keep doing a good job. And then they need to trust in that front office team member that they're doing the job that they need to. Need to. Don't demean them by uh, thinking or saying things that takes away the authority, really, that you've given them when you hire them for this position. You know, and trust is such a critical thing, not only in dental practice, but in, you know, just daily life and in our relationships with each other, you know, because once that trust is broken, it's really hard to put it back together. So yes. how, and, and it's a two-way street because absolutely the doctor has to be able to trust his team members, but the other way is exactly right as well. Those team members have to trust that the doctor's doing the right thing as well, Correct. Oh, most certainly. I mean, you know, one of the reasons why I've been with my dentist so long is because I believe in his ability. And I know that, you know, he doesn't say or do anything that isn't for the best of everyone, his patients, his team, you know, just everyone. So that trust is definitely key. And I think another key part in earning and keeping that trust is that I know that he believes in me. 
you know, so it's not just what he's, you know, ding, doing as far as dentistry or even what he's saying, but it's, it's that if I do something, I know he's got my back and I know that he believes that I'm operating for the best interest of the practice. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that sometimes these things, they take a while build that level of trust, but you're never going to get it if you don't show your front office team or anyone really that you're, um, that you're investing in them and that you really do uh, want them to succeed. Absolutely. And I'll put you on the spot here for just a minute, if that's all right, and we'll see what happens. Uh, if, if, how do you build that relationship? Cause not all dentists are warm and fuzzy. <laughs> you know, and yes. sometimes not all team members are warm and fuzzy. So how, how do you, or how have you worked with people who maybe aren't the, the best at personality or aren't at the best of being team players, but yet, you know, you've got to work together to move the practice forward and get the job done. I think for me, the key has always been about building, um, building those communication skills so that if there is something maybe that's not working, being confident and comfortable to go speak to someone and saying, okay, you know, I thought we were doing this. Why aren't we doing that? Um, it's, it's really hard to change a person's disposition. Uh, but I have found that if you, if you have a genuine love for what you do, it's going to show. So what I try to do when I'm working with teams um, and even myself is, you know, just to remind them and, and remind me that, you know, every day is a choice. Every day you get to, you don't have to go to work, you get to go to work. So how can we take that attitude, that belief in, in betterness and just communicate it to everyone around? It's, it's really about those communication skills. It's, it's about, you know, engaging with everybody around you and then, um, the trust, Kevin, the trust is just going to come with time. I'm from old school, okay? So my parents taught me, you, you give everyone respect until they give you a reason not to respect them. So I don't make anybody earn my respect initially. I'm going to give it to you until you show. So having that belief, if I'm respecting you and I'm trusting in you, it's just going to keep getting stronger and stronger every day that you do something right. So it's, it's a time factor, but it's also a personality factor too. What are you bringing into it and how are you using your skills, communication, whatever they might be, to build that uh, trust and respect up? Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think it's so fascinating the people who just – uh, expect, you know, well, I'm here. So, uh, the, the queen has arrived, uh, you know, bow down. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Lisa Marie, as always, I, I really appreciate your time. I, uh, just, uh, if you have a moment, just, uh, give our viewers a way that they can find out more about you and, uh, kind of the journey that you've been on to where you are today. Well, I do have a moment and I'm always happy to share. I think the best place to find me is on Facebook, the front desk lady. Um, you know, I encourage everyone to go there because I've been doing those pop in videos that we discuss and I have had some great pop in videos with you included. Um, just this last Monday or Tuesday, I'm sorry, we uh, posted one with uh, Deborah Carrier from twice as nice uniforms. Oh my gosh. Uh, she's awesome. So, um, been doing that and of course you'll find me at ADOM. I'm so excited. I hope everybody's coming to ADOM. You're gonna have a great time. Wonderful group of people. I, I was gonna say ladies, but it's people now. Wonderful group of people that um, really just wanna help you excel. You talk about growing your education and learning more. You couldn't find a better place than ADOM. So I Yeah, it's it's one of the highlights. Yeah, one of the highlights of my year, honestly. I mean the one meeting that I always circle on the calendar and say, you know, that uh, I'm going to that one. Uh, so I will look forward to seeing you there. And as always, thanks so much for your time and expertise. I really appreciate it.